The Twelve Labors of Hercules by Brittany Fowdy. When Hercules was a baby, his stepmother Hera hated him. So one night, while he was asleep, she sent two snakes in to kill him. When she got the next, when she got up the next morning, she found the baby strangling the two snakes. Even as an adult, Hera still hated him. He grew, when he married this woman and had and had some kids. Hera caused a man Hercules to go mad, and he killed his wife and his kids. When he was awoke from this madness, he was distraught at what he had done. For his first labor, Hercules was sent to the region of Nemea, near Corinth, where a monstrous lion stalked the countryside. The lion's hide was invulnerable to weapons, so Hercules could not pierce it with his spears or arrows, nor could he injure the beast with his club. Finally, he wrestled the lion into the ground and strangled it. After delivering the corpse as a proof of his success, Hercules skinned the lion with one of its own claws and took its impenetrable skin as his armor. Hercules was then sent to kill the Hydra, a many-headed monster that inhabited a swamp near the city of Lerna. Hercules attacked the monster in its lair, but every time he cut off one of its heads, two more grew in its place. While Hercules was fighting, Hera sent a crab to bite him, but he crushed the crab beneath his feet, his foot. He called for help from Iolaus, his nephew, who brought a blazing firebrand. After Hercules cut off each head, Iolaus scorched the stumps to prevent them from growing back. At last the Hydra was defeated, and Hercules dipped his arrows into its poisonous blood, making them lethal. Next, Hercules was sent to capture the hide of Serenia. With bronze hooves and golden antlers, this female deer was sacred to Artemis. Hercules pursued the creature all over Greece in a chase that lasted more than a year. Eventually, he was able to trap it by pinning its legs together with an arrow. He carried it, the otherwise unharmed deer, back to Mycenae. For his fourth task, Hercules had to catch the fierce boar that was ravaging Mount Eurymantheus. Despite its size, the boar was very agile and evaded capture. At last, Hercules chased it into a snowdrift where it became wedged. He hauled it back to Eurytheus, who was so scared that he hid in a large jar until Hercules took the beast away. Then Hercules had to clean out the stables of King Agius in a single day. Agius had thousands of cattle, and his stables had not been cleaned for many years. Rather than shovel all the stinking muck by hand, Hercules knocked two hole, hocked holes in the stable walls and diverted two rivers so that their water flowed through the shed until it was spotless. Next, Hercules had to drive away a flock of man-eating birds from Lake Stiphilus. They attacked people with their metal tip feathers and razor-sharp beaks, and they were so numerous that their droppings poisoned the crops. Hercules frightened them into the air with a rattle from Athena. He killed many with his arrows before the rest flew far away. Hercules was next sent to the island of Crete to capture a huge bull that was terrorizing the population. The bull had been intended as a sacrifice to the gods, but King Minos of Crete could not bring himself to kill it, so instead it was running amuck all over the island. Hercules captured the bull and took it back to Eurytheus. Eventually it was released, and it was later killed by the hero Theseus. Diomedes was an evil king who owned a herd of man-eating mares, which he fed with the flesh of his unfortunate subjects. Hercules rounded up the horses and loaded them aboard his ship. He then defeated Diomedes and his soldiers and fed the king to his own horses. After they had eaten, the mares became quieter, and Hercules was able to bridle them and take them to Mycenae. King Eurytheus wanted to give his daughter the magic golden belt belonging to the Hippolyte, the queen of the Amazons, so he sent Hercules to fetch it. Hippolyte fell in love with Hercules and readily agreed to give him the belt. However, the goddess Hera spread the rumor among the Amazons that Hercules had become the kidnapped Hippolyte. The warlike women attacked Hercules, and fearing that Hippolyte had betrayed him, he killed her, then removed the magic girdle from her body and sailed back to Greece. Hercules was then sent to the far western Mediterranean to capture a herd of cows that belonged to Geryon, a fierce giant with three heads and six arms. 
When Hercules arrived, he was attacked by a two-headed dog, Orthus, which he killed with his club. He then killed the giant with some poisoned arrows before taking the cows back to Greece. Next, Hercules had to collect some golden apples, guarded by the dragon Ladon, from the garden of three nymphs called the Hesperides. In one version of the story, Hercules convinced Atlas, a titan charged with holding up the heavens, to get the apples for him by offering to take Atlas's place while the titan fetched the fruit. Atlas readily accepted the bargain, but afterwards was loath to take back his heavy burden. So Hercules tricked him into agreeing to stay, but, but asking the titan to support the weight briefly while the hero went to get a cushion for his shoulders. Hercules then took the apples and returned to Mycenae. The final labor was the most terrifying of all. Hercules was sent to the underworld to bring back Cerberus, Hades' three-headed dog. Hades treated Hercules with respect because of his strength and skill. The god agreed that he could take the dog on the condition that he subdue the animal with his bare hands. Hercules wrestled Cerberus, squeezing his three throats until he was weak enough to be dragged to the surface. Back at Mycenae, Eurytheus was so scared of Cerberus that, true to form, he hid inside a bronze jar and declared that Hercules was free to go. Soon Hercules wanted to escape Hera's curse, so one day he built a, f a funeral pyre and, set, while standing on top of it, set it ablaze. Zeus took pity on his son and brought Hercules to Olympus, where he lived for all time as a god with his father.